Welcome back, my name is Teresa, and I'm very much in the present with you right now, loving you forever. I have an awful garbage filthy mouth where sometimes, just sometimes, I tend to use the word fuck as a comma. I don't know, blame my public school education. <laughs> If you're not into that or weird stuff in general, this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to X out the video here. No harm, no foul. But I'll remember our time fondly. Hello, my little lamb chops. I thought it would be interesting to do something slightly different on the channel. I thought, you know what would be pretty funny? I do it already. Why don't I just purchase things that look a little suspect? and see if they are indeed worth the money. There are a lot of cash grabs in this world. Like a lot, 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 a lot. And sometimes, just sometimes, you find a hidden gem. You get something so casket worthy. Or you get a complete abomination where you start to question your own sanity on why you purchased it to begin with. So with that said, I wasted my money so you didn't have to, Sephora edition. Apparently Sephora and Co. decided to have a makeup baby. It's how, it's how you make babe, actually, no. <laughs> I realize it's, you mash in chicken parts, okay. Chicken parts. Again, public school education. So Sephora and Coach decided to make a baby because some Long Island girl willed it into existence and now we have to deal with it. So do we run at it with pitchforks and burn it in a fire or do we love it unconditionally? Now there are seven items in this collection. One brush set, two eyeshadow palettes, one face palette, one lip gloss set, one nail set, and one eye mask set. Now for this review, I only picked up two of them because I'll be honest, everything else looked awful. <laughs> Not good. So these are the two things that looked somewhat adorable. And you're probably saying to yourself, well, why did you pick this up? Well, I wasn't even gonna pay attention to this because look at it. <laughs> like, I mean, come on. But a part of me is obsessed with Jaws and Great White Sharks. And I kinda wanted to try it. I kinda wanted to have it in my possession. But then I really thought to myself, you know what I really, really love? Like one of my favorite palettes ever made. It's the Sephora Moschino Bear Palette that came out was it last, I think two years ago at this point? That palette is hashtag motherfucking amazing, okay? And I thought to myself, <gasps> what if these palettes are an extension to that palette? What if it's the same formula? What if it's the best thing since fucking sliced bread? Fucking sliced bread. I mean, <laughs> whatever. And because of that thought, this is kind of how the series was born. You should never judge a book by its cover. So let's see if I wasted my money. Sephora Collection Sharky Eyeshadow Palette. Inspired by the fun and ferocious Sharky, one of the coach mascots, this palette provides impeccable payoff with blendable formula. The versatile shades allow you to create both everyday and fun looks that are easy to apply on the go, making this palette a must-have accessory for your handbag. For $38, you get this cute little palette. Honestly, a lot bigger than I thought. I thought it was gonna be like half the size of it. So it's actually pretty sizable. He's cute, he's weighted, and overall, I like the construction of it. I like that it has like a little coach tag and it's supposed to resemble a bag charm. Based on the description of the palette, I'm kind of on the fence about throwing this shit into your palette and being like, I'm good to go. No, even though this is constructed rather nicely, I wouldn't trust throwing a fucking eyeshadow palette in a bag. Like, no. Listen, how this thing opens, it's not very difficult. This thing slides onto the side this thing flips open. This shit will be in the bottom of your bag in no time. So I don't recommend doing that. Don't do that. Don't listen to them. Just don't. Anyway, when you open this up, you get this little color story and you get a full size mirror that is in the shape of my little sharky friend here. And this is the color story. In this palette, you get one metallic, one shimmer, and the remaining shades are matte. I think online, this looks so much better. <laughs> In person, it's so fucking muted. This shit looks so fucking different from what I pictured. I was like, oh, oh okay, okay. <sighs> so let's break it down by formula here. Both the metallic shade Amethyst and the shimmer shade Cosmos operated exactly the same. I honestly couldn't tell the difference between the two. Both of the shadows required a sticky base or some sort of saturation to provide a solid opacity. Now, I'm not one to use setting spray because I don't like spicy butthole that I usually experience when I use shimmer or metallic shades, so that's why I stick to glitter glue. So I use glitter glue with both of these shades and I still experience massive fallout to the point where it looked like Tinkerbell's 
shit all over my face. I found that I had to do a few layers for the shadow to build up opacity, and I was surprised to see that it never really got intense. It kind of stayed the same. If I compare this to my Moschino Bear Palette or any other fucking shimmer metallic, it's kind of more on the lackluster side. It's not the worst thing I've ever tried, but I definitely have things in my collection that definitely have a lot more saturation to them. It's funny because when you hear metallic, you expect like, damn, it's gonna be like, like my makeup dick is gonna be really hard. And like, I didn't even get a chub with either one of these shadows. Like it was just like, oh, okay. So what movies have you watched lately? You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> It was like, oh, all right. I'm gonna go right back into my body. Now, while I experienced upon initial application a lot of fallout and glitter bukkake central, throughout the day, sparkles would just fall all the way down my face. Again, making me look like I fucked a disco ball. The longevity of these shades were a problem, considering the amount of fallout that I experienced throughout the day. And it made me question whether or not I actually used glitter glue. But based on how this eyeshadow is performing, I don't think I fucking did. Needless to say, it was a mind fuck. Didn't like it. As for the mattes in this palette, the two lightest shades, suede and sand, which serve as the transition or crease shades of the palette, had amazing longevity, were easy to blend, and had great pigmentation. Those shades, absolutely wonderful. They were fucking great. The shade Onyx, eh, it was okay. It's pigmented, but kind of requires to be built up to have a stronger opacity, which is not the end of the world. However, if you want to say, I don't know, deepen up the outer corner, you really got to pack this fucking shit on. What I didn't like about the shade is that when you start to pack it on, you kind of blend it out a little bit, it kind of blends into nothing. So then you got to pack on a little bit more and then you blend it around just a little bit. Again, fucking nothing. So you kind of have to go back and forth a bunch of times for it to actually adhere to your face. And when you do do that, I would say over 20 minutes, it starts to look more like a dark charcoal gray. It's never a true black. And the amount of fallout that you get from that shadow, not the easiest to clean. The longevity was fine. I didn't notice any patchiness per se. It definitely balled it out a little bit. Now the worst shade in this palette is Sienna. Initially it applied great. It's very pigmented and very easy to blend. Unfortunately, the shade balds out pretty quickly. After 20 minutes, you start to notice it fades. So you pack more on and another 20 minutes goes by and you're fucking bald again. It's the weirdest fucking thing. I'm actually surprised that shade does that because I usually find when it's a pressed pigment or like a really kind of just like deep saturated color like blues for example, I'll have that issue with. But this though, I kind of felt like, oh, is this gonna be like a solid maroon shade? No, 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 no. Just didn't want to be on my face apparently. Was Looked at me and was like, I need to get the fuck out of here. And I mean, I don't blame it, but it's like, can't we just like hang out more than 20 minutes? I think what annoys me about this palette is the biggest inconsistency between the shades and that it looks so different in person. Online, it seems really bright, but in person, it's just, I mean, you see it. It's very muted, incredibly boring. I'm falling asleep looking at it. You know, <laughs> not good. This is not the same as my beautiful darling Moschino Bear palette. Boys, I'm afraid this is a fucking dud. Don't even look at this one. This is an expensive fucking dud. Inspired by Magical Uni, one of the coach mascots, these softly romantic matte and shimmer shades will take your glow to the next level. Use these three shades to complement your natural glow. They could be worn day or night and through every mood and memory you make. This palette is a perfect accessory to apply on the go, making it a must have for your handbag. So this palette also retails for $38. I would say the biggest difference between both of them is that you actually have a nice little metal keychain here. This one you have a leather one. But again, same bullshit. Oh, you can attach it as your bag charm and be like on your way. Don't fucking do that. Don't ever do that. <laughs> Cause again, I have the same problem is that well constructed well very easily. Don't be an idiot. Please don't for the love of everything. Don't be an idiot. This palette is fucking misleading. So very similar to the shark palette. You get this little unicorn head. You open it up, you get a mirror here and here is your palette. It's kind of like weird empty space here. So I kind of almost wish that the pans were a little bit smaller so they could have popped in an extra shade here, whether it be another highlighter or another blush option. That would have been kind of cool. Or even a contour shade, that would have been cute. This palette is very misleading. Online, it looks a hell of a lot fucking lighter. In person, it's actually probably 
more in line with somebody that has light to medium to tan skin tones. This uh, definitely is not gonna work if you look like me, i.e. uncooked chicken. And honestly, I'm totally fine that this palette is not for me, that's great. I just wish the fucking pictures would have reflected that and I could have fucking saved myself $40 on this shit. But whatever, this shit happens all the time. So in this palette, you get a matte bronzer, a matte blush, and this highlighter up here. The bronzer is a matte formula. I found it to be incredibly pigmented. It was effortless to blend and I didn't experience any patchiness or muddiness when using the product. This bronzer is very warm leaning, which I'm not a huge fan of because I'm a cool or neutral tone boy, but I'm not mad at it because while it is warm leaning, it's not orange toned. If you are uncooked chicken, this is definitely a strong bronzer. Like you've been cooking a little bit too long in the rotisserie, if you know what I mean. Formula wise though, it's fucking great. I have no issues with it. It was super lovely to work with. It applied easily. It had great longevity. And I felt like it was melting into my skin and it performed well with the other products I used. I would be interested in trying the Sephora Collection bronzers, definitely in the undertone that I feel comfortable with. And I'm gonna hope that the formula is the same because this formula is really nice. I really enjoyed it. Now the other product in this face palette is the matte blush. The shade is like a nice, like kind of like dusty pink color. It's absolutely beautiful. Again, another product that is just so easy to work with. It blended beautifully with the bronzer. It's incredibly pigmented. So a little bit does go a long way, but if you do go in with a heavy hand, rest assured that you can blend it out. The formula is very smooth. And again, didn't experience any patchiness when blending the product out. And overall, I feel like it's a nice flattering color. So the last product in this palette is the highlighter. Unfortunately, as a highlighter, I cannot use it. It's way too fucking dark. But as an eyeshadow, it's so nice. I really love the little look that I created today. Pretty much just use the mattes in the shark palette and then use the highlighter as my shimmer shade. And as a shimmer shade, it was it worked fine. It adhered really lovely with the glitter glue. Didn't experience any kick up, any fallout. And it's just beautifully pigmented. I wish that formula in the highlighter was the formula in the metallics. I feel like it just looks so much nicer than the actual metallic and the shimmer shade from the shark palette. So. But at the end of the day, I was really happy to be able to use that shade in the palette and it wouldn't just become something that I could never use. So unfortunately, while I cannot comment to say like, oh, it makes a really good highlighter, as an eyeshadow, it's fucking great. <laughs> to reiterate again, I really think this palette is meant for those that have light to medium to tan skin tones. And I think out of both palettes, my favorite is the face palette, even though it doesn't really work for me. The formula in the face palette is pleasantly nice. And again, my only complaint with the face palette, other than how it looked online, I really wish they would have made the pans just a little bit smaller just to adhere some of this empty space up here. So I think adding like a contour shade, that would have been cool. Now for $38, is it worth it? No. <laughs> like I like it, but I, I don't think for $38, like this is, if you're only gonna be buying one face palette, this is not like the end all be all of face palettes. This is something that you get when it's on sale. As much as I enjoyed the palette, it's not the most amazing fucking thing I have ever tried. It's not like, oh my God, earth shattering, everybody in their fucking family needs to get it. It's good, but it's not $38 good. If this tickles your dick, I would recommend waiting for the Sephora VIB sale to come up. But honestly though, I still even think anywhere from 10 to 20% is still not enough off. Give it six months and when this shit's on sale for 50 to 75% off, that's when you pounce. Just saying, okay? Just saying. It's cute, but it's a cash grab. <laughs> it's a motherfucking cash grab. Anyway. Let me know down below if you were interested at all to pick up these products. And if you do have these products, do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you not care? Let me know. Also, let me know down below what other possible cash grabby products or suspect products, we should call them, you would like to see me review. There are a lot of suspect things out right now. So uh, let me know down below which one that you would like to see. And if there's enough interest, I will waste my money for you. <laughs> With that said, I want to say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. As always, feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button. It's free. And hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. To all my beautiful, wonderful patron bubbies, thank you so much for keeping this disgusting, filthy, trashy, really trashy, like awfully, like, like really awfully trashy 
garbage boat afloat. I couldn't do without you. I love your little faces. I cannot wait to eat them and love up on you. If you want to know what's currently on my face, along with where to get these products, which by the way, please get them on sale for the love of everything, everything will be listed in the description box below. And I'll see you little pumpkins later. Bye.